Good morning. It's Tuesday, November 3rd. Um, quite nice out, actually. Uh, sounds like it's going to be relatively warm the rest of this week, both during the day and the overnight lows are in the 40s. Um, so, kind of the game plan. Um, that's pretty good weather for been drying corn, or the relative humidity is going to be low enough that with a decent amount of warmth, uh, I think we can do some good. Um, so probably going to run fans, at least during the day, on the bins that had some wet burr corn. We didn't have any corn that went into the bin real wet this year, so kind of going to be a little bit careful that I hopefully don't over dry anything too much. Um, but there was a little bit of wetter corn that went into the 36 foot bin here at the home place and the other one that's on the landlord's farm. Um, that I got leveled out last week. Um, neighbor across the road is running in hydrus. Uh, I don't think the soil temperatures are below 50 yet, but there's a possibility they might be running in serve, I guess. Um, which it, basically a stabilizer that keeps the nitrogen from leaching away in the winter. Um, I still think putting it on in the spring is really better, but I don't farm the whole countryside, so my logistics time-wise are a little bit different than some people's. The other thing that I really want to get rolling on is uh, paint. Since it's going to be warm, that means it's a good time to do some painting, especially for stuff like this that we're going to have outside probably, because I don't think it'll really fit in the shop very well. Um, so once I get the bin leveled out, which the one here at the home place isn't too bad, so I don't think it'll take too long to shovel. Maybe, I'm hoping less than half an hour, but we'll see. Um, then I think I'm going to come out here and try to get this wire brushed as good as I can and get it degreased um, so that it can hopefully dry off and maybe paint it later today or for tomorrow if I don't do it today. Um, but it's going to take a little bit of time to get everything cleaned up in the nooks and crannies. Um, and it's going to be a messy, dirty job. So um, I put on some jeans that are already a little bit dirty. Um, so that's going to be order of business number two. Uh, I've got a little bit more rye to do in this neighborhood. Uh, then we're probably going to pull the Hineker off the tractor. Um, the farm that's a few miles away had a pond that we uh, eliminated and put in some terraces um, and basically had, had the pond pushed out in the spring and they sort of piled up the dirt uh, because it was all soupy and wet. Our dozer contractor got in there and pushed those piles, spread those piles out. Um, and we're going to give them hopefully a few days to dry here this week and then the end of the week uh, run over there with some tillage tools and get that sort of worked in and leveled out a little bit and hopefully seed down a heavier rate of rye on that to kind of help get that soil back into a good structure for crops to grow in. Um, so that's basically where we're at. I've got the wagons I need to paint the slopes on and get them put away as well. Um, it's supposed to be dry and sunny and nice basically all of this week and some pretty decent chances of rain I think maybe Sunday-ish. Um, so hopefully going to try to get what I can cleaned up before then. Um, we'll see how things go, how fast everything happens. I haven't done anything on the combine yet. I want to get the, the corn head painted for sure and probably will get it put away. I don't know if I'll get the combine blown off this week or not, but we're still relatively ahead of schedule. Um, and there might be some other things that take priority over getting the combine totally cleaned up, given that the weather is nice. Let's go do some unwanted cardio. Well, I masked up. Um, this bin actually looks better than I remember or that I thought it was. Um, <laughs> probably gonna shovel a little bit to kind of even up the low spot on the outside over here. Um, but we're not really too bad. We're a little high on this side compared to that side. Um, but the corn in here is all relatively dry. Uh, and I think if I kind of smooth that out a little bit, it'll bring up that level by the wall and probably this will be fine. Um, it's a little low in the middle, which is probably good um, because usually with this type of spreader, you end up with all the fines in the middle. Um, so the air is not gonna necessarily want to flow through the middle anyway. So having that a little bit low to make it slightly easier for the air to get through is probably a good thing. Um, so this may be less unwanted cardio than I thought it would be. Got the grain bin leveled out, uh, fans are running. Let's start cleaning up some rust. All right, got my safety squints and mask ready to go. Um, weapons of choice, we're gonna be using this uh, angle grinder from back when Craftsman was actually good quality. 
Um, so basically going to use this on the big surfaces, uh, gloves to kind of keep my hands from getting any more gnarly than they are. Uh, putty knife to scrape off any seam sealer um, that isn't stuck anymore or flaky rust uh, back in corners and stuff and then a hand uh, wire brush to kind of get spots that I can't get to with this as well. Um, so we got the power cord strung out. For the grinder, I went ahead and strung out the air hose as well because I'm probably going to want to blow some stuff off at some point, I'm sure. And the next step is to crawl up inside here. And I'm going to kind of work from the top to the bottom um, is the general idea. So basically, hopefully there will maybe be less stuff falling on me and getting down inside my shirt. Um, so that's the game plan. I had all this pressure washed off, what, three, four days ago? There's already bird droppings all over the tires. <clears throat> and the cross members apparently. Mostly what I'm going to try to do is the steel parts inside here. So um, the axles are attached to the steel subframe. So basically everything black in the video and then the sides and the rails on the bottom of the trailer are all aluminum. Um, which Shouldn't corrode too much, although this was, I think, run in enough salt that there's some corrosion around some of the rivets. Um, it seems like they use steel rivets on aluminum, which seems odd to me, but I guess they know what they're doing. Um, so, kind of the first thing I'm going to do is take the grinder and go across the top, and then um, do what I can reach down to on the front and back on everywhere, and these plates to some extent. I don't know how well I'll be able to use a grinder on them since they've got these uh, rib nuts or hot rivets or whatever they're called. I'm not exactly sure if they're threaded or pressed in. Um, but basically, do what I can with the grinder and then come back and clean up anything that I can't get to by hand. Well, I made it 10 seconds and realized I didn't have earplugs and made it about 30 seconds and figured out that these things are going to fog up instantly. Um, so I've been trying to go without real eye protection which is probably stupid of me, um, and just pay attention to which side of the wire brush I'm working on so that it throws chunks away from me and not towards me. Um, probably going to have to crawl out and get something different though. So this is some of the seam sealer that I was talking about having to peel off. Um, so I think they put it most of the spots where there's steel next to aluminum to kind of try to keep salt and other corrosive substances from getting in there. Not really stuck anymore. So we're going to try to paint the steel. I uh, might tape off the aluminum because I think the paint isn't really designed to stick to aluminum. Uh, but then we'll come back and put some seam, seam sealer back in those spots uh, after everything is fully cured and dry and everything. <laughs> Forty-five now, making progress. Um, some spots that I can't get into very well with the uh, big grinder, so I may come back with some other tool. Might have my dual action sander, air sander down here. I'm not positive about that. I need to go look, um, but that might be a good tool to get into some narrower spots. Um, I probably also am going to have to start the truck up and get some air in the bags because I can't really reach back in here in the areas behind the tire. Um, or, again, might be able to hit that with the DA. Um, but I think I've mostly got what I can get from inside of the back end here. Now getting ready to move to this area. Um, so do front and bottom and kind of try to clean up some of this stuff. Um, there's probably a certain amount that I'm going to have to do crawling up underneath in between the tandems also. So got that to look forward to. Well, making progress, but we've got a ways to go still. Um, get this halfway cleaned up, but I haven't come back with the wire brush, the hand wire brush, or uh, putty knife or anything to try to scrape off some of the stuff that I can't really get into the nooks and crannies. There's definitely some loose stuff there. Um, but we're getting there. Um, looks like I forgot to get the bottom side of that tube also. Um, we got a ways to go yet. Um, 
might see just a little bit more uh, dry this afternoon, uh, early afternoon, and then probably going to work on this some more. Also, good news, uh, I do have my DA down here. Um, so DA stands for dual action, and the reason that it's called that is there will be a lockout um, where you can either have basically the sanding disc um, spin with the motor or you can have it this orbital action um, where it won't cut in as much and you sort of scuff things. So probably I'm going to be using it in the orbital style and I'm hoping that I can get back behind the tires a little bit better with this than with the big grinder and also that it maybe will work on some of these spots where there's a fair amount of paint left or still there probably because it was painted by a third party manufacturer before I went to the trailer uh, plant. Um, but kind of scuff that up so that hopefully the paint has something good to stick to. After lunch, uh, plenty of sanding and wire brushing and everything else to do on the trailer yet. Um, I was hoping that I could maybe get that done this morning and then get it degreased and drying this afternoon, but that didn't happen. So we're going to work on some other stuff a little bit, um, maybe get back to that later in the day. Um, so one of the other projects that I need to get sort of rolling. Um, I want to get all the stuff that I need to paint done this week while it's warm uh, and the corn head is one of those things. Uh, however, since we ran the last day in kind of damp conditions with drizzle and everything else, there's a lot of mud on the snouts. Um, so I don't really want to get the entire head wet because then everything else is going to get moisture into spots we don't really want moisture. Um, so I think I'm going to pull the snouts off and just set them on the concrete and power wash them off. Um, try to get as much of that dirt and stuff out of there as possible. And then uh, hopefully they'll be able to dry nicely in the sun today. Uh, there's quite a bit of wind right now, so I'm not necessarily going to try to paint today. Um, but if I can kind of get stuff ready to go, I might paint like tomorrow morning or something. Uh, I also may try to do some work on some of these snouts. Um, these back sections, a lot of them are kind of cracked and thin. Um, it would be nice to put poly on this, but the poly is probably worth more than the head is. Even I mean, it's in good condition, so it serves a purpose. Um, but it's kind of hard to write that check um, on an older head, I guess. Um, so um, I looked, and I do have a little bit of 24 uh, O24 wire for the wire welder um, that should be able to weld this without burning through too bad. Um, so I may see if I can make that work or see how bad it burns through. Um, but there are a couple of those that I maybe would like to do some work on before I paint stuff. Um, there's some that dad has brazed in the past that the brazing has kind of gotten worn off and cracked and stuff. And then there's also uh, two or three that he's put patch panels on like this, um, which is maybe a better solution long term. Um, I had sort of considered the possibility of trying to get some pieces bent that would sort of underlap the bottom edge and, and cover that up, but never did. So um, I think we're going to pull the snouts off and get them pressure washed. So these have latches on the back, which I guess I had off when I did the, uh, when I blew the wet stuff out of the gathering chains. Um, so we should be able to take them off pretty easy. Uh, I put the head most of the way down because that makes it a little bit easier. All shiny and clean. Lizzie got to play with some water. So lucky you're gonna let those dry off and probably work on welding them in a little bit. Right now I'm gonna go do just a little bit more cover crop. It's a pretty nice day to plant cover crops. Kinda glad the air conditioner works in this though. Um, this is probably the last pass. I'm just going to do a little bit in this field. Um, there's kind of a little draw here that quite a bit of water comes through, but I mean, as long as I can keep the dirt from leaving the field, that's the main idea. Um, so we've got about, uh, this would be the sixth pass dry on the downhill side here. And then I did the indros on both ends also, um, overlapped a little bit in the middle to kind of get extra seed in the indros where we normally drive up and down um, with the sprayer and everything else uh, and then also kind of get some of those areas where we're on wagons some uh, rye in those spots to 
maybe sort of break up some of that compaction or at least have root channels down through some of it anyway. So uh, we're coming up to the end and that's probably gonna be it for the ride drilling for the time being. Back home, got the tractor fueled up. Looks like probably burned about a half gallon an acre for the ride that we seeded, which we're running eight miles an hour with the hydraulic fan and stuff. It's not too bad, especially when diesel's $1.50 a gallon or a little bit less than that, I think now. We're gonna try to weld a little bit on these. Hopefully I don't burn holes through them. Got the first one done. Uh, I think I learned some things. It's not a thing of beauty. I'm, I've said before, I think, a welder is not something that I am, it's something that I own. Um, I think the reason that this cracked was a lot that the spot welds, which is where these rings are, um, that were there from the factory failed and then that allowed the sheet metal to flex. Um, and I sort of tacked the cracks back together before I did that and I think I should have stuck that extra, like the framework piece back to this and then tried to do the other stuff. Um, so we've got some warpage, but it's better than it was. Well, like everything in my world it seems, that took longer than I hoped, but we got stuff stuck together, some worked better than others. Um, not sure how some of the spots where there was uh, brass from brazing are gonna turn out, but it's better than it was. Um, I think we're pretty much ready to paint in the morning. Um, it's about quarter after five right now, which means since we're daylight savings time now, it's gonna be dark here very shortly. I did not work on the trailer anymore. Uh, didn't pressure wash anything else, so should've just put that away after I did the snouts, I guess. Um, but things are moving forward slowly but surely. Happy election day, by the way. I forgot to mention that when I did the video early this morning. Um, I actually voted early in person uh, in central Iowa where I live over the weekend. So um, I think we're going to start cleaning stuff up, putting stuff away, and go watch some election results, I guess.